Hello everybody, you found Intunist and Super Smash Brothers is one of, if not my favorite video game of all time. Look at my friggin' shirt, it says, oh, that's, that's, that's not Falco, it, I don't think it's Falco, it's Fox, you can see how much I love Smash Brothers, cause of my shirt! The competitive Smash scene is a scene with, uh, dudes, a lot of dudes, mostly dudes, unfortunately. <laughs> The competitive Smash Brothers scene is uh, a lot of people, mostly dudes, almost all dudes, who compete at Super Smash Brothers to win cash prizes and to just generally be the best at the game, as many a young Smasher dreams to be. And to achieve that goal, a lot of the top Super Smash Brothers players usually play the better characters in the game, as not every character in the Super Smash Brothers games is on even ground. That fact and my love for the competitive Smash scene inspired me to make this video, a top 10 list of the top 10 overall greatest Super Smash Bros. characters across all four games. With that said, let's head right into the list! Now Sheik used to be universally considered the best character in the game. Since then, she has been heavily nerfed, although many players, including myself, still believe her to be the best character in the game. Regardless, pre-patch Sheik had a lot of things and tools about her that were totally nuts. Some of those things and tools still in her possession. Sheik's needles did, and still do, put you into tumble. Which is insanely good, as in previous games they only used to have incredibly slight knockback and did not put you into the tumble phase at all. If angled right, mid-air needles could combo into bouncing fish. Bouncing fish, of course, being another thing that makes Sheik an amazing character. Her forward air also has deceivingly great range, originally having more range than even Marth's forward air. Although, this wasn't so much Sheik's forward air being good, as it was more of Marth being a bad character back then. Regardless, it had fantastic range, and even had a throw that comboed into it, which led to the fairs comboing into each other, which usually led to a bouncing fish, which usually led to a kill. Her tilts were also amazing, and comboed into themselves at certain percents, namely her fair, which could lead to the potentially deadly combo I just described. And once Sheik was finished tossing you around like it was your bar mitzvah, she grabbed you and down threw you, which, in pre-patch, cleanly comboed into up air, which was one of the best kill confirms in the entire game. Like I said, since then, Sheik has been heavily nerfed, but the character is still phenomenal, and without a doubt, still viable. One of the two top tier characters in Smash 64, Kirby was a force to be reckoned with. Until Melee came out, but regardless, as balanced of a game as Smash 64 is, Kirby certainly stands out over most of the cast. 64, of course, is not the most popular Smash game, so chances are you're wondering now what makes him so good. And, well, let me show you. Look at that. Doesn't that just look like fun? That's right, Kirby's up tilt is astronomically disjointed. Probably the most disjointed move in all of Smash, to be honest. And considered by many to be the best move in the game, and possibly one of the best moves in the entire series. This move not only has a disjoint that can reach from my recording space to your bedroom right now, but it also is an amazing combo tool, is a very quick move, and if used repeatedly, can break shields due to the massive shield stun present in Smash 64. Kirby is also fantastic at edge guarding because of not only his ridiculous up tilt, but his back and forward airs, the latter of which can be used to carry your opponent downward. Oh yeah, and did I mention his down tilt is a meteor smash? Kirby's only bad attributes are his lightweight and moderately weak combo game, but other than that, character is more than solid. Falco Lombardi the second Star Fox character to enter the fray did not join the roster just to get overshadowed by his leader. Absolutely not. This character is a big part of the current melee metagame, ranked second in the game behind Fox. Falco is a character that excels at almost every little thing. Seriously. The character's combo game is absolutely ludicrous because of his frame 1 shine which sends opponents upwards instead of down like Fox's, which combos perfectly into itself and his aerials. Namely his down air, which is a frame 5 incredibly powerful spike that functions as a mid combo move, a combo starter, a combo finisher, and sometimes just used to style. The character, like Fox, also has lasers as his neutral B, but unlike Fox's, his cause hit stun. They also auto-cancel when you short hop laser, which is incredibly good because it makes Falco's neutral game even more devastating, as these lasers allow Falco to approach non-committally and lets him pressure from afar. And to top it off, the character is fantastic at edge guarding too due to his slightly longer back air compared to Fox's, his superior F smash, his down smash, and of course, his down air. I put him this low on the list for three reasons. The first is that Falco is much less mobile than Fox, which a lot of people, including myself, think is the main reason he's worse than Fox. 
The second is that his recovery sucks. His up B does not travel very far, and if you aren't at a good spot to side B to grab the ledge, you're probably dead. And the third reason is because I think that there is a chance that Falco might see a slight drop in the melee metagame in the future. I think this because the best way to counter his lasers is to power shield them, and as top players become better and more consistent at power shielding, they've succeeded in taking away Falco's best neutral tool. All in all though, the character is amazing, and he absolutely deserves to be considered a top 10 overall Smash character. Otherwise known as Fatichu, because this game came out in the 90s, you know, when Pikachu was fat, Pikachu is godlike, ranked number one on the official Smash 64 tier list, being one of only four Super Smash Bros. characters in the history of the game to have zero disadvantageous matchups. Pikachu has an incredible recovery, able to sweet spot the ledge at ease with his up B due to the move having invincibility frames and being able to get back from just about anywhere. He also has an amazing up tilt because the move not only combos into itself cleanly, but it also combos into a multitude of other moves as well, giving Pikachu some really stringy combos. With those combos, often leading to death. God, just looking at it, it's so stupid because like, any person who plays a character that has an up tilt that combos into itself and combos into other moves leading to stringy combos like this is a scrub, and frankly, a scumbag. <sighs> Thank goodness I don't know anyone like that. Oh right, so before we talk about anything else concerning Marth, check out his grab range. So yeah, that's a uh, thing. Marth is generally considered to be the third best character in the game, but some consider him to be as high as second. Marth is a character known for his excellent combo ability, especially on space animals. This earned Marth the nickname, the Spacey Killer. The character also has remarkable range on a lot of his attacks, such as his F smash, up smash, up tilt, F tilt, jab, down air, up air, back air, you get the idea, the character has more range than the frickin' opera singer, alright? This combined with his ability to start his fantastic combos off of a grab, which isn't that hard because of, well, you know, make Marth quite the admirable opponent. The character also has the specific and unique attribute of dealing extra knockback and damage if you hit your opponent with just the tip of his sword, which can lead to some interesting combos and early kills. The character, like many other characters in Melee, has a patented combo, dubbed the Ken Combo, which is named after the player who discovered it. So after Marth is done comboing the crap out of your Star Trek furry, he's gonna proceed to landing a forward air into a down air, which spikes on every part of the sword in the NTSC version of Melee, which is the version that us Americans play. The only really bad thing about Marth is that his moves are kind of laggy, but other than that, character is pretty great. One of the most hated characters in Super Smash Bros. history, Diddy Kong, used to be broken. Despite the character still being a top tier in today's meta and considered by some to be the current best in the game. Regardless of that though, I think pre-patched Diddy Kong was one of the best characters in the history of our game. I'll sum it up like this. Take all the good things you know about Diddy, which would be most things about the character that are still true today. His combo potential, his fantastic item play due to the banana, and his speed and fantastic neutral game. And now, add this to it. That, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are new to Smash Brothers, especially Smash 4, is the hoo-ha. And I don't mean that in a sexual way. Like, take, don't, don't put that picture on the video. That, don't, don't put that. Get that picture out of there. They, I, the hoo-ha is the patented, pre-patch Diddy combo, which led to a kill. Diddy Kong's down throw used to cleanly combo into his up air at kill percents. And up air, back then, was a much stronger kill move. So that fact combined with rage, combined with the fact that Diddy had a kill confirm into that move, combined with the fact that the character had one of the best neutrals in the game due to being able to briefly immobilize an opponent with an item that he could spawn at any time, made pre-patch Diddy universally, and frankly, obviously, the best character in the game. I personally believe that if Smash 4 had not been patched, that it would be 
hands down, the worst Smash game. Because frankly, Diddy Kong was just ridiculously overpowered back then. He did not need a guaranteed kill confirm off of a throw. It just didn't make any sense. And I'm glad that Nintendo came to their senses and said that. Like, I understand, like, a lot of Melee and Brawl boys or whatever are gonna be like, Oh, you should just adapt to that. And yes, we would have tried to adapt to that, but... As best as we could, how could we have adapted to a character having hands down the best neutral game and a kill confirm off of a throw that he could just pretty much grab you at any time because he had an item that immobilized you that he could spawn at any time? Like, it, it, it frankly, it just was not fair. And I don't really have a problem with Diddy Kong now, but let's face it, it was a good thing that he got nerfed. And speaking of good characters that got rightfully nerfed, Alright, you can blame the Europeans for this one. Bayonetta, in this case pre-patch Bayo specifically, was probably the stupidest character Super Smash Bros. has ever seen. Now, you might think I'm gonna immediately start bitching about which time, as dumb as that move was, and frankly still is, it might honestly be the best move in the game. This is not what made Bayonetta such an amazing character. No, no. That would be- okay, do I really need to say it? Hold up. Do I really need to say it? We all remember it, and frankly we all try not to, so... What? I have to say it? Are you- are you serious? I have to take these kids down the memory lane of hell by reminding them about Bayonetta- Okay, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. <sighs> what made Bayonetta so amazing was her combo game. Bayonetta had combos that were virtually, if not completely, impossible to escape from. There was no way to DI out of them effectively. There was no way to SDI out of them. You could not attack out of them. You couldn't air dodge out of them. Like, it was like getting wobbled by the Ice Climbers, except Bayonetta deserved it even less than the Ice Climbers did. At least with the Ice Climbers, you knew what they were capable of and could do something about it. That and they actually had bad matchups that made their lame tactics way less effective. But with Bayonetta, it wasn't like that. With Bayonetta, it, it was like going for a jab at 30% in center stage is overextending now, because if you did that and Bayonetta expected it, she witch-timed you, which made you completely immobile, and because of her bullshit combos, if she witch-timed you, you died. And there was absolutely nothing you could have done about it. If you messed up one little thing, your stock was gone. It was like you were always overextending against Bayonetta simply by trying to fight her. It's like you were being punished by playing the game. Not only were her offensive options absurdly overpowered, her defensive options were ridiculous too. The hitboxes on her up and side Bs were too big and took priority over a ton of moves, so you could not edge guard her when you somehow managed to get her off stage, causing her to have one of the best recoveries in the game. And she still does. Bayonetta's air dodge, if executed at a certain frame, teleported her completely out of harm's way using the bat within, so yeah, that's also a thing. And don't get me wrong, this isn't to say that the character does not have flaws. Her neutral game, even during pre-patch, was lacking, and her overall mobility was not very good. Her rolls and dodges were also pretty laggy, and her smash attacks weren't safe on shield, and those moves were pretty laggy too, so they were easy to punish. Bayonetta is also light and tall, making her die earlier than other characters, and have a bigger hurt box than other characters respectively. But her pros heavily heavily outweighed her cons, as you can easily sub witch time for her dodges in most situations, and like I said, once Bayonetta landed a witch time, you died. End of discussion. The Ice Climbers. Infamous for their unique trait of gaining a lethal infinite simply by obtaining a grab. Surely in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, the latest and greatest Super Smash Bros. game since Shrek Super Slam, they wouldn't reward a character simply for getting a grab, right? I... I... I-I need a minute. I'm, I'm sorry. That's right. They took the Ice Climber's infamous infinite and made it impossible to escape from. Not that it wasn't before, but they basically added insult to injury by having them drag you around the stage now like you were a fucking like, kid in a toy store being dragged out by your mom because you didn't get a toy that you wanted or something to lead to your inevitable demise instead of just holding you in place. Real talk, this is probably the deadliest chain grab in the history of our game. 
At least in Melee, wobbling was escapable if your percent was low enough and the player messed up a little bit, but in Brawl, it was 169% inescapable without errors, making the Ice Climbers the second best character in the game and one of Smash Brothers' best overall characters. <laughs> Good lord, where do I even begin? I seriously- no, legit, I seriously don't think I can cover everything about Fox that makes him the undisputed best character in Melee, but I'll sure as hell try to sum it up in a short list. But first, I want to quickly talk about the biggest thing that makes him the best. Shine. Shine is Fox's downbeat. It's a move that was designed originally to reflect projectiles. Is that all it can do? <laughs> no. No, it can do way more than that. It can do way more than most characters in Melee can do. Like, this move is literally better than, like, half of Melee's characters. I'm not even exaggerating when I say that. It, it literally is. Shine comes out on frame 1 upon input. That frame is also an invincibility frame, and the hitbox covers Fox's entire body. That basically means that on the frame that Fox does this move, he's completely invincible. Not to mention that the move sends you diagonally downward with a crap ton of hits done. The move does all of that, and it's also jump cancelable, which means that you can cancel the move at any time by jumping out of it. So the stuff Fox is capable of because of this move alone includes infinites, safe pressure by being able to jump away from your opponent upon the missing of the shine, shine grab which is useful because it makes Fox invincible before the grab which lets him safely grab opponents, and turnaround aerials such as shine back air. Shine back air is especially useful in melee, as in melee you cannot reverse aerial rush, so the fact that Fox can basically instantly turn around and do a back air and almost every other character in the game can't is pretty humongous. He can also use shine to safely grab ledge by turning around an offstage shine, jumping out of it, and up being towards the ledge. He can also use this move for gimping, as like I said before, it sends you down and away with a ton of hits done. So what that means is that this move can kill at 0%. He can also use his shine immediately out of shield, and through a technique called wave shining, which is shining into a wave dash, he can combo shine into a multitude of other moves. These include, but are not limited to, his up smash, a grab, a nair, and sometimes just a bunch of repeated shines into death on certain characters. Alright guys, so now that I've finished covering Shine, I want to say a quick thing that'll put just how good Fox really is into perspective for you. I have almost filled up the same amount of time I've spent talking about certain other characters on this list, and the entire time I've been talking about exclusively one move. I haven't even covered all the other insanely good traits that this character has. His recovery is amazing, it might honestly be the best in the game. Almost all of his moves are insanely versatile, with most of them being incredibly quick, but also remarkably strong as well, such as his nair and his back air, and it lower percents a ton, and I mean a metric fuck ton, of his moves combo into one another. The amount of options you have with Fox compared to the rest of the cast is simply ridiculous, and you can play him in so many ways, making him incredibly versatile. His lasers are one of the best projectiles, if not the best projectiles in the game, as they do a ton of damage rather quickly and also have insane range. He has insane kill setups, and he also- I- I gotta- hold up. I- I gotta stop. I can't. I think you guys get the point by now. But, there is one more. One character who I personally believe is the greatest character in all of Smash Brothers. Brawl Meta Knight. This probably didn't come as a surprise to very many of you, but I had to put him at the top of the list. Meta Knight is not only without question the best character in Brawl, and some of you may say I'm stretching when I say this, he might be one of the overall greatest fighting game characters of all time. He's very fast in almost all aspects, as all of his moves have very little startup and ending lag. And as if that wasn't enough, every move, and I do mean this, literally every move in his arsenal, except for his dash attack and his glide attack, have transcendent priority over the rest of the cast. Let that sink in. He has 5 jumps and an amazing up B, so his recovery is great, safe, and unpredictable. And his up B not only is amazing at recovering, it has such incredibly high base knockback and knockback growth, that like, it- it's just amazing at killing too. It's just an all-around amazing move. It lets you get away from your opponent, it lets you recover easily, it's a good wake-up attack, it's an amazingly strong attack so you can use it to kill, it just does it all, people. 
He is also the best edge guarder in the game, as his multiple jumps make it very easy and reliable to gimp opponents. Not to mention that he can wall of pain, semi-spike, and easily stage spike certain characters. His KO moves are quick, reliable, and powerful, able to kill very early for a lightweight character, which is also a pretty big thing, because lightweight characters are typically pretty weak. You know, when you think of lightweight characters, you think of weaker characters, like Pikachu, or Olimar, or like Kirby, and Meta Knight is a lightweight character too, but is he weak? Nah. Nah, he's not weak at all. He's actually retardedly strong. He has very fast rolls and dodges, and due to some of his moves such as his down air, he is very good at spacing. Which, again, is pretty ironic considering that he was seemingly designed as a character who looks like they shouldn't have much range or kill power. Seriously, look at his stubby little arms! It's like he barely even has arms or legs or anything, he's like this cute little knight, he's oh, I'm a mommy, I wanna go as a knight for Halloween! But that's not the case, he's strong as shit, and he has an advantageous matchup over every single character in the game, with an average matchup spread of 60-40 over the entire cast. Now you must be thinking, oh he has some weaknesses, one may think Meta Knight can easily be KO'd because he's gotta be a light character, right? And he is! But due to hitstun cancelling in Brawl, it doesn't matter. With good DI and proper use of Brawl's hitstun mechanics, Meta Knight can live to like 160%. Sometimes even higher. I don't know how to describe it. it. It's like... It's like you were playing a different game when you played as Meta Knight as opposed to everybody else. Even to a non-competitive smasher, which I was when I played Brawl. I was 12 years old, I played with items on, with my friends and everything. I was a casual dude, but with just a little bit of experimentation, even they would be able to clearly see that Meta Knight is the best. To put into perspective how broken he really was, allow me to drop some hot smash history on you. Back in early 2012, Meta Knight was banned for four months from tournaments due to the general consensus that he was overpowered. You might think, okay, well, what's the big deal? Wasn't Bayonetta banned a while back ago when she was ridiculously good? Yes, she was, but only in certain scenes such as Spain and Russia. Meta Knight, however, was universally banned. That's right, the Unity Ruleset Committee, which has since disbanded, banned Meta Knight from competitive play for a while, and since that was the rule set that was being pushed at the time, Meta Knight was banned around the entire world from competitive Smash Brothers. Meta Knight is quite literally in his own tier in Brawl, and it looks like it's gonna be that way for years to come. And there you have it, the top 10 overall greatest Super Smash Brothers characters spread across all the games. If you like this video, go ahead and let me know by either leaving a like, subscribing if you haven't already, and sharing the video. Any of those three things would mean the absolute world to me. My name is Nintunist, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will gladly see you next time. Smash for life, baby! Woo!